All phenomena, the Buddha said, are rooted in desire. So why is it that we don't get all the things we want? It's because our desires pull in so many different directions, some of them skillful, some of them not. And when we focus on what we want, we don't usually think about what are the long-term consequences. So one of the ways of solving this problem is to learn how to develop the right kind of determination. In other words, focus on the things that really are important. Learn to train your desires so the important ones, the skillful ones, take precedence. The lesser ones take lesser precedence, and the ones that are really unskillful get pushed out. This is the basic teaching of the Four Noble Truths. There are certain kinds of craving that lead to suffering. There are certain desires, and the factor of right effort in the path, that lead to the end of suffering. So the Buddha is basically giving us guidance and how to sort through our desires. And that guidance comes first in the path as right view. And when he talks about determination, discernment comes first. You have to stop and think, what do you really want in life? And think about what's going to be required in order to get it. What person will you become? What activities do you have to master to get what you want? And you can go through all kinds of different things and ask yourself, is it going to be worth it? And you also have to think about the amount of time. Do you have time for all the things you want? If something is really important, you should be willing to pare everything else down so that the really important things can get all the time they need. And then you've got to learn how to think strategically. To get what I want, what do I have to do? That's another lesson from the Four Noble Truths. We want the end of suffering, but you can't just go straight there. You've got to go via the path, and the path requires work. It requires that you master certain skills. Learn how to say no to a lot of desires. The desires that would be against the precepts, the desires that would lead to ill will. The desires that would pull the mind out of its concentration. You want to learn how to sort these things through. You realize there are certain skills you've got to develop in order to get where you want. So when you sit down, think about your New Year's resolutions or your resolutions for your life as a whole. You have to start with discernment. To be wise in your choice of your goals and wise in your choice of the means by which you're going to get to the goals. Then the next factor is truthfulness. That means really sticking with what you've determined to do. This is a quality of a good heart. We tend to think of people who are good-hearted as being kind, benevolent, but not necessarily strong. Sometimes we think of good-hearted people as being kind of weak. But when you stop and think about it, if your heart is really good, it's, if it's in the right place, then you don't want it to waver from that right place. You've got to train it to be strong. This is why in the perfections, which are basically the qualities that come into determination in one way or another, goodwill is part of the the factor of discernment, in other words, you choose things that really will be for your own well-being, the well-being of others. But then the other heart qualities besides goodwill, 
focus on things like persistence, endurance. In other words, the strengths that see you through. And these depend on the third quality, which is relinquishment. In other words, there are things you're going to have to give up. But when you give them up, you have to give them up in a way that you're not just depriving yourself. We tend to think of renunciation and relinquishment as deprivation. But when the Buddha talks about renunciation, he's talking about getting the mind into right concentration. The right concentration is your food. It's your strength. He doesn't have you follow the path, starving all the way, and then finally getting food at the very end. He gives you food to carry along, or the skill by which you can find food all along the side of the path. That's one of John Lee's images. You follow the path back and forth, back and forth, and you begin to get to know the, the different plants that grow on the side of the path, and you figure out which ones are edible, which ones are medicine. And concentration is, is edible. It's good for you. It's nourishing. Because you're going to need the strength in order to keep your good heartedness alive. So why is it renunciation? Well, you're renouncing sensual thoughts as you're getting the mind concentrated. Your fascination with thinking about food, the pleasures of clothing, the pleasures of shows. All the things that people tend to talk about all the time. You have to say, no, I'm not going to talk about those to, to myself right now. I'm going to talk to myself about the breath. Let go of other things. Hold on right here. It's interesting to note that when John Lee, especially in his early teachings, talks about concentration, he talks about different themes that get the mind in the right attitude to want to let go of things outside. Yeah, as you think about the different parts of the body, think about how many of the things in the world you find interesting because of the needs of the body, but then when you look at the body itself, just on its own, what have you got? Take it apart piece by piece and there's not much. As you think about things in terms of the elements, your body is just the same kind of elements as the world outside. It came from those things, it's going to go back. As you think about inconstancy, stress, not self. So many of the things that you could want out in the world, they're not worth the effort to go into them. When you think in these terms, you drop, drop, drop a lot of the concerns in the world outside. And once those things are dropped, then it's easier for the mind to settle in and to be willing to stay right here. But then as you stay right here, you realize you're not depriving yourself. You're finding a new source of well-being inside. And it goes deep inside. Here it is right close to the mind. The breath is the closest thing to the mind there is. It's through the breath energy that you know the body, and through the body that you know the rest of the world. So get to know this first point of contact. and learn to make use of it so that it really is nourishing. This will enable you to develop the fourth set of qualities that the Buddha said goes with a good determination, and that's calm. Your powers of endurance, your powers of equanimity. You learn to endure harsh words from other people. You learn to endure physical pain. Partly through the strength of the concentration, but also you'll have to learn how to use your discernment again. With harsh words, you learn how to depersonalize them. In other words, you realize this is a normal way of human speech. People speak this way all over the world. Sometimes they say true things, sometimes they say things that are not true. It's normal. Sometimes they say things well, with a well-meaning mind, and sometimes with bad intentions. Sometimes they'll praise you, sometimes they'll criticize you. This is a normal 
speech in the world. The Buddha himself was criticized. People lied about the Buddha. So what about us? What can we expect? You think in these terms it's a lot easier to live with the things that people say that create against your ears. Then the next step, of course, is just leave them right at the ears. There's a great passage where the Buddha says, just tell yourself an, an unpleasant sensation has made contact at the ear, or an unpleasant sound has made contact at the ear, and just drop it right there. The reason we don't drop it is we want to feed on these things. There's another reason why you need your good powers of concentration to give yourself an alternative food. So you don't get worked up about all the injustices and the mistreatment dished out either to you or to the people around you. It doesn't mean you just sit there and do nothing, but it means you've got to learn how to get the mind in an even keel so it can watch these things and look at where they're coming from. Again, think strategically. So you can figure out the best way to put an end to the injustice without getting your mind swallowed up with anger. Because the kind of endurance and equanimity the Buddha is talking about, like the endurance and equanimity of a soldier. And sometimes in the battle he has setbacks, but he can't let himself get upset by them. At the same time, he doesn't give up. He keeps wanting to gain victory. But he realizes it may take time. And so he nourishes himself with that thought. Uses his wisdom, uses his concentration. Uses his virtue. There's an interesting passage where Jitta, the householder, is about to die. And some devas come to see him and say, set your mind in becoming a universal monarch, a ruler of the continent of India, because you'd, be you'd be a good ruler. And the reason they give is because he was a virtuous person. You set, a virtuous person sets his or her mind on, on something, it's much more likely to succeed. So as it comes down, the the various factors of a good determination come down to the factors of the triple training, virtue, concentration, discernment, under the headings of discernment, truthfulness, renunciation, and calm. So when you think about what you want in life on this first day of the new year, it's a good time to stop and think, where are you going? You don't want to just simply go along with the flow. You want to be the kind of person who determines the flow. So where do you want to determine it to go? What would be the best place? What would be the best way to do, go about it? Think in these terms, realizing you can't get everything you want, and you're going to have to deal with some obstreperous desires who go in different directions. But if you can learn how to get some order in your desires and focus on the ones that really are in your own best interest, then this convention we have of making resolutions, making determinations, really will be for your long-term welfare and happiness.